chickens, everybody, right there on the website and supports, supports all kinds of farmers, all right, because that's what Matt's doing. All right, we'll be back next Tuesday. KCAA Loma Linda, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM, and now 102.3 FM. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this commercial right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. Do you have any questions about legal issues? Have you ever been stopped by a police officer and issued a ticket that you're scared to deal with? Have you ever been in trouble with the law and don't know what to do? Do you have a will or power of attorney question? Is your home being foreclosed upon and you don't know where to turn? Maybe you were given a contract that you don't understand. For freedom and a worry-free solution, call for Legal Shield today at 213-245-1305. It's that simple. You will have access to high-quality law firms that will fight for you for less than a dollar a day. Peace of mind is just a call away. That's for Legal Shield. Call 213-245-1305 or visit us at nocourt.us. It's justice for all and not justice for some. So, you want to be in show business. Do people tell you that you're really funny, you have a great personality, and you should have your own talk show? Many of us have been told that, but we don't know how to get started. It's easier than you think. Let the pros at Cali Vegas give you a free talent evaluation. Call 949-445-1119 and learn how quickly you can create, produce, and host your very own talk show. Imagine not having to sit in traffic every day, commuting back and forth to the same old boring job. Get started in television or radio today with your free talent evaluation from Cali Vegas. Call 949-445-1119 or visit them online at calivegas.com. Make your dream come true today and create your new career and learn how to become a television or radio star with the help of Cali Vegas. 949-445-1119. Call now. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou. Lou is one of you and will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou is like you. He's on meds, too. Call 800-349-6855. 800-349-6855. 800-349-6855. Again, that's 800-349-6855. Nobody wants to get ripped off, broken into, or robbed, but nobody wants to pay a lot of money to have their home protected either. I've got an offer to tell you about to provide home security for your home for less than a dollar a day. For real, with no installation or equipment charges. And this is from a company rated number one by a leading consumer research company. According to the facts, most of you won't even call unless there's a burglary in your neighborhood or something bad happened. So let's give you a reason. Save money. For less than a dollar a day with no other costs, you can get your home secured. Plus, get a lifetime equipment replacement warranty. You need protection for your home. Call the Home Security Hotline right now. 800-361-3491. 800-361-3491. 
800-361-3491. Again, that's 800-361-3491. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Why? Because you can save 45% on packages compared to your high-priced cable bill. Wow. Take those giant scissors out and cut the cable and save with Dish TV. Plus, you get a free DVR upgrade to record your favorite shows and free installation. And with Dish Anywhere, you can watch TV for free on your mobile device. Act fast. You can save hundreds of dollars. Does your cable company do that for you? I don't think so. Get all the best TV programming at your fingertips at a fraction of the price of cable TV. So say adios, arrivederci, goodbye to the high cable bill, and save up to 45% on Dish TV packages today. These are limited time offers and can change at any time. Call fast. 800-405-2561. 800-405-2561. 800-405-2561. That's 800-405-2561. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. Today's show is supported by Legal Shield, providing legal protection and peace of mind for all. <laughs> you have this really cool read, folks. It's live; anything can happen. So, Legal Shield is brought to you by, well, let's say, by Legal Shield, providing everything from help with traffic tickets, texting and driving, DUIs, court appearances, estate planning, even contracts given to you that you don't understand, plus a whole lot more. For more information, contact Legal Shield at 213-245-1305. That's 213-245-1305. Again, 213-245-1305. Or visit them for more information at nocourt.us and tell them the sports circus sent you. And a big welcome to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast, as well as our friends over in Las Vegas on 97.9 FM, KIOF, and those watching on Amp TV and Hotel Television. I have a special guest co-host today. Go ahead and introduce yourself, young man. Sal, this is Brandon Schneider. I'm the uh, Chief Revenue Officer for the Golden State Warriors. Uh, thanks for having me on, and I appreciate the, uh, the co-host opportunity. That's right. <laughs> you're not going to get knocked in the head. Don't worry. You're good. <laughs> That's good. I was oh, worried there for a second. No, 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 no. That's good stuff. It's all fun. Listen, anything can happen here on the circus. And let's face it, it's a circus, and we prove it every day. All right, so tell everybody. Give everybody, like, the, the 30 second on yourself. So I've worked I'm, – I'm just starting my 18th season uh, with the Golden State Warriors. Um, so I grew up in the Bay Area. Uh, went to UCLA, and then first real job out of college, uh, started out selling tickets for the Warriors. That was back in 2002. Um, wow. And it's been quite a ride. I've had had a lot of different jobs um, and been in my current job for a few years. So chief revenue officer, we, we, we obviously have had a really good basketball team, not so much uh, right now, a lot of injuries. But we, we were the first team in the NBA in 53 years to go to five straight finals. Uh, so that's been quite a run. And, and I think a lot of that coincides with Joe Lacob and Peter Goober, buying the team um, in November, and actually, coincidentally, uh, it was November 12th of 2010, so today's the ninth anniversary of them buying the team, um, and that, that was really the turnaround for us. Um, so it's been, it's been quite a ride. It's been a fun um, learning experience along the way. We've had a lot of success on the court, and now we're, you know, we just opened a new arena, uh, Chase Center, and, and you know, as, as basketball fans know, we've started the year two and nine uh, with a lot of injuries, Clay Thompson, Stephen Curry, Draymond Green. At one point, we had our whole starting lineup uh, injured. So, so it, unbelievable. I think that was longer than 30 seconds. But that gives you that gives you what's going on in a nutshell. No, that's fine. I mean, look, this is an open forum. Listen, Brandon, we could talk about whatever we want to, but 
you know, a lot of people are kind of down on the Warriors because of this and that. Well, they're not the same team. Listen, folks, if you understand the notion of injuries and you understand how teams have to bob and weave through the injury road, listen, these guys are doing everything they can do. Whether you lose a player here or there is not the issue from a trade or a free agent signing. I mean, Brandon, you've seen this in 18 years with the organization. You've seen the highs and lows of the organization. But really, what is this about? The longevity and the success of the organization, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's well said, Sal. Um, you know, we, we again, five, historic five-year run. Um, and then heading into the off season, we knew we were going to have um, some question marks heading into this year as far as what the team was going to look like. You had two, you know, a bunch of free agents, but two major free agents in Kevin Durant and Clay Thompson. Um, and then we had kind of a, an unprecedented thing happen uh, in the span of six games. So the last two games in the NBA Finals, and then through our fourth game this year, we had Kevin Durant rupture his uh, Achilles, Clay Thompson tear his ACL, and Stephen Curry break his left hand. Um, so you have three future Hall of Famers getting hurt in a span of six games. So that 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 rocked us. I mean, even if uh, Kevin Durant had made the decision to stay here, which is you know, what we were of course hoping, uh, and Clay Thompson uh, did sign a, a five-year um, deal with us, even if Kevin had stayed, both those guys would have been out. You know, a good chunk of this season, if not the whole season. It sounds like in Kevin's case, he's not going to play this year. I don't know that for sure, but that's what what's been reported. Um, so either way, this was going to be a, a transitional year uh, just because of injuries. And then, So when Kevin made the decision to leave uh, and we were able to engineer a sign and trade through, you know, this is Bob Myers, our GM, Joe Lacob, Kirk Lacob, you know, our whole team, uh, to get a, a young all-star, D'Angelo Russell, who's a 23-year-old, you know, all-star point guard, was unbelievable because in the absence of that, you lose Kevin Durant for nothing. So you get Russell, uh, you know Clay is going to be out for a while, um, Get, and this is all getting too in the weeds, but but getting Russell triggered um, a hard cap. So so we were really limited in what we could do to fill out our roster um, because you physically can't go over a certain clip, which we're right up against. So we had to fill the roster with some minimum guys, which is which is good. Um, and so we looked at this year and said, you know what, we're going to start the year with Stephen Curry, um, um, D'Angelo Russell, Glenn Robinson the third emerged as our starting three, Draymond Green, and then probably Cauley Stein and, and Looney playing center. And, and you're like, that's a pretty darn good team with Clay Thompson, you know, hopefully being in a position to come out, uh, come back around uh, the All Star break. Um, so that that was kind of the vision and saying, okay, we're gonna be, we're gonna we're gonna hang in there. Clay's gonna come back. We'll be hitting our stride for the playoffs, and let's see what can happen. And then, by the way, looking ahead to the future, you get into next year, and you're gonna have a draft pick. You're gonna have a mid level exception. You have a 17 million dollar trade exception. You had the chance to develop a lot of our young players this year, and you say, okay, we're gonna be good this year better as the season goes, and even better next year. Well, the season right. starts. Lo- Looney's played 10 minutes so far this year, and he's an underrated player nationally, but, but a really important uh, player for our team. Willie Cauley-Stein missed all the training camp. Uh, you know, Alan smiley Geach, one of our draft picks, missed all the training camp. Jacob Evans got hurt in the second game. But Stephen Curry breaks his hand. He's out three months at least. Draymond Green hurts his finger. D'Angelo Russell <laughs> sprains his ankle. So we're going I'm, – I'm laughing because it's I – mean, you either laugh or you cry, I think. And so, we're, you know, we've been playing a bunch of these games with, with nine players, uh, including our two two-way players. So, you know, it, it's our guys are playing hard. Uh, we squeezed out a big win against Portland, you know, a good Portland team last week. And uh, we've been competitive, and, you know, we're just we're, we're, we're going to do the best we can and play as hard as we can and win as many games as we can and, and try and get healthy. Well, you know, Brandon, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, the Warriors are done because they don't have this, they don't have that. And that's not the case. I mean, look. A healthy Warriors team still has the key components and still, in my opinion, they still are the team to beat in the NBA as a healthy club. Now, obviously, with the players that are out right now, you have a lot of work to do. But for some reason, people say, well, because there was a free agent signing here or there. Well, that's the end of the show for these guys. Certainly not the case because the team wasn't built with just one or two or three players in mind. You have a whole squad that's solid. Yeah, I I think, again, very well said. And, you know, you look and, and part of it's, um, you know, when you have these these big players change teams, that's what that's what tends to get people's attention. So you have a lot of people talking about teams like the Lakers, you know, LeBron and Anthony Davis are obviously really, really good. The Clippers with Paul George and, and Kawhi Leonard, um, you know, and, and, and then you've got, uh, you know, people talking about some of the teams in the East, Philadelphia, Milwaukee. Uh, what have you, but, you know, we have four all-stars when healthy. Um, there's not another team in the league that, that can say that, 
Um, so I think you're right. And, and, and we're set up now. You know, we got a lot younger. Uh, Stephen Curry, believe it or not, is now our oldest player at 31 years old. So we're in position to be really good um, for this year. And then, as we've said, to, to be able to build on this for next year and beyond. So, so, so that's really the goal. Right. Let, let's be really good in the short run and, and put ourselves in position to continue to get better uh, as, 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 time, as time goes forward. All right, back in a few off the sports circus. Don't go anywhere. So, you want to be in show business. Do people tell you that you're really funny, you have a great personality, and you should have your own talk show? Many of us have been told that, but we don't know how to get started. It's easier than you think. Let the pros at Cali Vegas give you a free talent evaluation. Call 949-445-1119 and learn how quickly you can create, produce, and host your very own talk show. Imagine not having to sit in traffic every day, commuting back and forth to the same old boring job. Get started in television or radio today with your free talent evaluation from Cali Vegas. Call 949-445-1119 or visit them online at calivegas.com. Make your dream come true today and create your new career and learn how to become a television or radio star with the help of Cali Vegas. 949-445-1119. Call now. Once upon a time, there lived three energy hogs. Now, an energy hog is what you have when humans waste energy. One day, the three energy hogs set out to find themselves a cottage. Let's look for leaky windows, said the first energy hog, for he knew that would waste energy. Let's look for leaky doors, said the second. Let's look for a swing set, said the third, for he had more blubber than brains. So they set off down the road. Presently, they came upon a tiny cottage where dwelled a clever girl named Dreadylocks. I open as leaky windows, cried the first energy hog. I open as leaky doors, cried the second. I open as the bathroom, cried the third, for only his brains were smaller than his bladder. But Dreadylocks liked playing cool games at energyhog.org. And from energyhog.org, she learned how to use energy wisely. So the three energy hogs were forced to look elsewhere to waste energy and had to use the disgusting restroom at the gas station down the road. And the moral of the story is, to use energy wisely, log on to energyhog.org or waste not, hog not. This public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. Are you a small business owner or pursuing the dream of starting your own company? Do you know where to start or how to grow that existing business? The American Business Trust Company has the answers you need. The American Business Trust Company can help you start up with capital, business strategy, sales, and marketing, and establish your company with a physical location or an online presence on the internet. You decide, you bring the idea. The American Business Trust can help with the rest. For a free evaluation, visit them online at abtrustco.com. That's abtrustco.com. Or call them at 657-600-1876. That's American Business Trust Company, 657-600-1876. Call them today. They'll help your business right away. That's American Business Trust Company. Online at abtrustco.com. American Business Trust Company. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. This segment is brought to you in part by Cali Vegas, helping people create and host their very own radio, TV, or multimedia talk shows. Cali Vegas can help with everything they need to get out of sitting in hours of traffic, like they're probably doing right now, and host their very own talk show in their very own studio. Call Cali Vegas for more information at 949 949- 445-1119. That's 949-445-1119. Again, 949-445-1119. Or for more information, again, visit them at kellyvegas.com. That's C-A-L-I Vegas.com. And tell them the Sports Circus sent you. And a big welcome back to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from Honolulu all the way to Boston and a bunch of points in between. And those watching on AMP TV, that's A-A-M-P dot TV, as well as hotel television in 20 major cities around the country. And big welcome back to Brandon Schneider, our 
guest co-host, Chief Revenue Officer for the Golden State Warriors. Thanks for coming back with us. Thanks for having me, Sal. My pleasure. Hey, I want to get back to that Kevin Durant bit for just a quick moment. Now, look, out of the, the losses for the team, we have to say which ones are big, which ones are bigger. What are more long-term effect? What are more short-term, right? You're an economics guy, and I read that about you, right? I, I'm an economics guy as well, right? So we think of the opportunity cost of our dollars. What's the best money spent? What's the best money risk, right? That kind of thing, right? So how about the idea of actually – not having the guy that had, had arguably the worst injury. I mean, how many basketball players truly recover from a torn Achilles? Yeah, it's, look, there's no question it's a tough injury, um, and there hasn't been a ton of, a ton of guys that have, that, have, that have done it, that have had the same injury, and, and not a lot of guys that have had it in their prime. Um, so there's not a lot of data, but, but what I would say and what we know of Kevin Durant, I mean, he, he's uh, – an unbelievable basketball player will work very hard and and look we 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 would love to you know we would have loved to have had him uh, stay here so i mean I, I think he'll i think he'll work hard and and get back uh to being you know the great player that he's always been uh but but i but i do understand your point i mean it's you know it, 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 there's always a risk in these things and that is a tough injury but i i just think he's such an amazing athlete and works so hard that you know i think i think it's likely he's going to come back uh, and it'll take time, but I think he's going to come back and be, you know, the same type of player that he's been. That would be that would be my guess. But, you know, only time will tell. But it would seem that the Warriors made a good business decision by saying, you know what? Maybe we're not going to spend the money here. Maybe we're going to let this guy walk only because the possibility or think about the the probability of a player at that level returning to the same level. Now, here's a perfect example. Think about Derrick Rose. Now, Derrick Rose, when he got himself injured, with the style of ball he played, it was really, really tough on his knees. I mean, the human body wasn't meant to do the things that Derrick Rose did to his knees, and he was his own worst enemy. He's still playing well. Arguably, you could say his stats from the first several years have now been matched, but with about a three to four, maybe five-year lag in between. So his stats really dropped off, and then they kind of leveled back. So think of the rate of return. What's the ROI for a guy like Kevin Durant maybe being down with the Achilles issue? Yeah, I mean, look, every every situation is different. Um, I I just know in Durant's case, uh, we, it wasn't it wasn't a business decision, and, and we're really fortunate to have the ownership. I mentioned Joe Lacob and Peter Guber, and and, and right. for fans, you know, for for Warriors fans that go to games or watch games on TV, you you see Joe sitting on the floor every single game, and and Peter lives in LA, but you see him on the floor for the vast majority of games. These guys are are huge fans, and and yeah, we're a business just like any other team, but but our goal our primary goal uh is to win and so um there's never there's never a, really a question of like what's the right business decision or what's this or what's that it's what, what what do we have to do to win and if you can you know if you can keep people like kevin durant and clay thompson you know two of the major free agents we had last year you, you do everything you can um to do it and 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 the reality is that the way um you know the nba these players uh, after a certain period of time depending on you know first round draft pick there's different circumstances that dictate the rules but at some point they have the opportunity to become free agents just like you or me sal and um you know and, and joe lake has been out there and said like you know he respects um, as do all of us, you know, the, these guys' um, uh, ability to, to be able to play, you know, where they want to play and what makes them happy. And so that's really what happened here. We, we, would, we would love to have Kevin Durant, um, you know, still on our team. We wish him all the best in yeah. Brooklyn and, and, and have no doubt that he's going to come back and, and, and be a great player. Yeah, he's a, he's a fan favorite in a lot of places. I think a lot of people like I'm a fan of his as well, and I like the way he carries himself on and off the court. He's not a distraction. He's not a – is not a, a a dumpster fire when it comes to social media or this or that. I mean, the guy does the right thing, generally speaking. Yeah, no, he, he look, we, we had an incredible three years uh, with Kevin on our team, you know, three finals appearances, two championships. Uh, so, you know, nothing but great things to say uh, to say about Kevin. Okay, so let me ask you a little bit about your climb to the to the top as a sea level in a professional sports organization. Look, there's a lot of people that are listening to this uh, from coast to coast. It doesn't matter where you're at in America. They're, or they're sitting at the edge of the bed, flipping the channels on their hotels. They just checked in saying, how the heck do I go from 
as an account executive, whatever, for a company, basically a sales guy, all the way to the top. And this guy hit the C-level. How do you do that? What's the magic? What's the secret sauce? I mean, how is it? Is it besides hard work? What do people have to do to really hit a significant level in a professional sports organization? Well, I think uh, my strategy was if you stay uh, long enough, you know, they got to promote you after a while. Uh, so it's just like squatter's law. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Well, maybe I'm half kidding. Uh, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> come on. So you, so you mentioned, I mean, you mentioned hard work kind of in passing, but I, I think that that's a big piece. I think that's an underrated piece. Um, you know, it's funny. We, over the years, interviewed a lot of salespeople and, and not as much anymore, but in the early years, a lot of the interviews that, that I was a part of was, was new salespeople and everybody sits there and tells you how hard they're going to work. And, and what I learned over time is I think a lot of people don't know what that actually means. So, so that's an underrated thing, but, um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, I think, you know, I was, I was fortunate to, to, um, fall into a great situation with a great organization. So I think, you know, working for the right people and having the right mentors to help, help you along the way is really important. Um, and, and then I think really, you know, being a team player, um, because look, everybody wants to, to make more money and everybody wants to grow their career. You know, there's very few people that don't want those things. But how do you go about doing that? Um, and I think, you know, some people do that, and it's clear to people that that's what they're looking at. You know, they're, they're looking out for what's, what's best for Brandon and what's best for Sal, uh, which you should to an extent. You should always look out for yourself. But, but really, if we can always think about what's best for the Golden State Warriors um, and, and really go at it with that in mind, um, you know, that's, that's, that's where you win. And, and take it a step further, you know, people, people want, again, that next opportunity. I want to grow, but how do you do that? You know, are you just – if you come in and do what everyone else does, uh, I like to say that's like getting a C in school. Um, that's fine. You're not going to fail. You're not going to lose your job, but you're not excelling or standing out, right? So, and how do you do that? So you, you do everything that's asked of you. That's great. But how do I, how do I almost do the next job um, before I get it, right? So, and not in an overzealous way or in a siloed way, but how do I find additional ways to, to add value? So an example would be for salespeople, you know, my, I'm, I'm, I was paid when I was an entry-level salesperson, to, to make phone calls, um, you know, meet with, with prospective buyers and, and, and initiate sales, ticket packages, season tickets, things like that. But could I be proactive and think about, you know, how I might be having success or, or, or times when I wasn't and there, maybe there's things that we could have been doing with, with ticket pricing or packages or amenities or, or what have you that would, that would put us in a better position to be successful. So that would be an example of how a salesperson could sort of start to do the next job of what maybe a manager would be tasked with. Um, and, and I think because I, I think, you know, to, to just sit there and think that someone's going to come to you one day and say, hey, Brandon, I really like you. We're, we're going to promote you. That that doesn't happen very often. So how do you how do you put how do you put yourself in a position where, um, you know, where, where you're a commodity or where, where, where it makes sense, where it makes sense for the company to, ha to have that um, to give you that more responsibility. And then when you're given more responsibility, how do you take advantage of that so that everything you do. Um, you know, everything Sal does turns to gold. So then it's like from a, from a company standpoint, yes, I want to do right by Sal, but the more I give Sal, you know, the better it is for the organization. So it, it becomes a win-win. So that, you know, I think that's, that's the philosophy that I've, I've tried to take. And, and it's, you know, it's not getting too far ahead of yourself either. You know, come in, work hard, do the right thing, um, and, and trust that over time, you know, it's going to work out. Um, you know, sometimes people get impatient, you know, and I've worked here for six months and I haven't gotten promoted yet. So, you know, we have a lot of conversations um, internally with people on the team, and, and that's similar to the advice I, I try and give. Um, I have a lot of people that reach out to me, you know, on LinkedIn. You know, a lot of people want to work in sports, so I spend – I have a half-hour commute into work. So if I don't have a, another business call set up, I try and talk to people that have reached out to me that are looking for career advice. And that's that's the kind of advice I, I try and give. Um, you know, it's I, – I wish I would have had more of that, um, you know, when I was trying to, to find my way, you know, coming out of college. Right, but look at it this way. I mean, you had a lot of good advice, but now you're giving great advice to people. And the great advice that you're giving is, look, there is no easy path. People always tell me, well, you know, I wish I was like a guy like Brandon Snyder. I mean, look, this guy's got a, he's the chief revenue officer for the Warriors. Boy, he must have it made. But let me tell you something. There are no shortcuts. Do the work. That's it. It's all about doing the work. Don't take the shortcut. I don't want to hear, well, this didn't work out for me. I don't want to hear you tried. 
because trying is trying. But when you actually do it, you really put your back into it. You put your heart into it. You put your brain into it and you eat, sleep and think it every day. Why? Because that's your goal and that's your job. Folks, we're going to be back here in just a few minutes with Brandon Schneider, Chief Revenue Officer of the Golden State Warriors. And also he's involved in Major League Soccer. I want to hear a little bit more about that. When we return, last word to come, folks. Don't go anywhere. Back in a minute. So, you want to be in show business. Do people tell you that you're really funny, you have a great personality, and you should have your own talk show? Many of us have been told that, but we don't know how to get started. It's easier than you think. Let the pros at Cali Vegas give you a free talent evaluation. Call 949-445-1119 and learn how quickly you can create, produce, and host your very own talk show. Imagine not having to sit in traffic every day, commuting back and forth to the same old boring job. Get started in television or radio today with your free talent evaluation from Cali Vegas. Call 949-445-1119 or visit them online at calivegas.com. Make your dream come true today and create your new career and learn how to become a television or radio star with the help of Cali Vegas. 949-445-1119. Call now. Once upon a time, there lived three energy hogs. Now, an energy hog is what you have when humans waste energy. One day, the three energy hogs set out to find themselves a cottage. Let's look for leaky windows, said the first energy hog, for he knew that would waste energy. Let's look for leaky doors, said the second. Let's look for a swing set, said the third, for he had more blubber than brains. So they set off down the road. Presently, they came upon a tiny cottage where dwelled a clever girl named Dreadylocks. I hope it has leaky windows, cried the first energy hog. I hope it has leaky doors, cried the second. I hope he has the bathroom, cried the third, for only his brains were smaller than his bladder. But Dreadilocks liked playing cool games at energyhog.org, and from energyhog.org she learned how to use energy wisely. So the three energy hogs were forced to look elsewhere to waste energy, and had to use the disgusting restroom at the gas station down the road. And the moral of the story is, to use energy wisely, log on to energyhog.org, or waste not, hog not. This public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. Are you a small business owner or pursuing the dream of starting your own company? Do you know where to start or how to grow that existing business? The American Business Trust Company has the answers you need. The American Business Trust Company can help you start up with capital, business strategy, sales, and marketing, and establish your company with a physical location or an online presence on the internet. You decide, you bring the idea. The American Business Trust can help with the rest. For a free evaluation, visit them online at abtrustco.com. That's abtrustco.com. Or call them at 657-600-1876. That's American Business Trust Company, 657-600-1876. Call them today. They'll help your business right away. That's American Business Trust Company. Online at abtrustco.com. American Business Trust Company. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. This segment is supported by the American Business Trust Company, helping companies with strategy, sales and marketing, capital resources, and establishing businesses with physical locations or on the internet. Visit them online at abtrustco, that's abtrustco.com, or call 657-600-1876 to learn more. That's the American Business Trust Company, 657 600 1876. Get in touch with them, learn how they can help your organization right away. And welcome back to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from Honolulu on CBS Sports 
1500 KHKA, all the way to our friends in Boston on WBNW. Wow, we're on, you know, we're on twice a day over in Boston. We're on at noon and also at 8 p.m. And a big hello to our friends in Las Vegas on 97.9 FM, KIOF. Even our friends in sunny Southern California on KCAA 106.5 FM, 102.3 FM and 1050 AM throughout the Los Angeles market, our NBC News, CNBC Financial and NBC Sports affiliate, plus all the others that we just can't name off. Hell, we're run out of time in the show. All right, folks, we're here with Brandon Schneider, Chief Revenue Officer of the Golden State Warriors, also involved in Major League Soccer. Brandon, welcome back and tell everybody about Major League Soccer and where you're at with that. Yeah, so I, I, uh, I own a small piece of Los Angeles Football Club. So um, MLS has been expanding, uh, more teams coming in future years, but LAFC, we just completed our second year in the league. Um, and so uh, I'll, I'll take a step back. Um, what, one of the, the, the main owners of the Golden State Warriors are Joe Lacob and Peter Guber. Uh, so Peter Guber came to me several years ago um, as he was just starting to think about an expansion MLS team in L.A., uh, and we talked more and more about it. He was asking advice on certain things related to ticketing and other things. And as, as we talked more and more about it, he offered me of other uh, of us. Uh, uh, our president, Rick Welts, is involved. Uh, and Kirk Lakeup, who's our executive vice president of basketball operations, is also involved. So the three of us all own a small piece of LAFC. Um, and, and Peter was the one that kind of started that conversation. So I grew up playing uh, a lot of soccer through high school. Uh, so big, big fan. And uh, so when, when presented with that opportunity, um, you know, couldn't, couldn't say no to that. So own a small piece of the team, and it's been fun as we, as we work to grow or, or to build the brand, really, uh, and to launch the team before last season. Uh, it's been really fun working with the team. So Tom Penn um, is the president of the team. Uh, Larry Friedman's the, the chief business officer. And then John Thorrington runs our, our soccer operations department. Uh, great team. And, and so we, we made the playoffs in our first season. Um, lost in the first round, and then this last year, we uh, set a all-time MLS record for mo- most points in a season. And our best player, Carlos Vela, uh, just got announced. I think it was this, maybe it was last week, as MVP of the league. Uh, so we we now you have 14 teams in the MLS making the playoffs. We had a bye in the first round. We won our first playoff game over the Galaxy, and then we lost in the conference finals. Uh, got upset at home by Seattle, who went on to win. The Sounders went on to win the championship actually this past Sunday. So uh, it was a. It wasn't the end that we envisioned, um, but we had we had an unbelievable season, and, and and to make the playoffs in each of our first two years, you know, is, is really impressive for a for an expansion team. So it's been it's been really fun, uh, a, a great learning experience for me, and great being a part of uh, a, a part of that franchise in LA. So Brandon, as part of an owner of a professional sports team, I mean, look, there's two of them in LA, two soccer teams in LA. And now there's, there's kind of a struggle to capture that market, right? And so how do you position the LA football club over the galaxy? What is the plan? I mean, you play over next to the Coliseum over on the old side of the sports arena. It's a really nice park. I think it's what, 20, 22,000 seats are there, correct? You got it right, Sal. Yeah, we play, we, we, uh, we play where the L.A. Sports Arena used to be, which is, like you said, right next door to the L.A. Coliseum, and you, you hit the nail on the head. It's 22,000 seats for soccer. Nice. Okay, so arguably, that is, that's really about the same size as where the Chargers play, uh, just off the 405, is it not? Yeah, I think, um, so, so the Chargers are playing, and I don't, I should know this, it used to be the StubHub Center, I think it's got a different name now, but the Galaxy play right. in Carson, which is where the Chargers are playing temporarily until the new stadium's done next year. I, I think they have a few more seats. I think it's more like twenty-eight thousand seats, but it's it's like you're saying, it's in the same ballpark. Right. So I, what I find interesting is here you've got two soccer clubs, and of course soccer is a big deal in a lot of parts of this country, but most people don't really know much about it. If you take the masses, they say, "Yeah, what do we know? We know World Cup, for example." And I and I know NBC's been pushing. Some of their some of their soccer agenda as well. How do you capture a market that hasn't had a lot of exposure to the soccer world? What do you do to grab them and say, "Now you're mine. I got you." Yeah, it's it's a good question, and and there's I mean it's it, there's a there's a long answer to this, but but uh, Don Garber's the the um, commissioner of the MLS has done a great job. The league is growing uh, uh, really really quickly. Uh, I don't know if you saw Seattle, the Sounders for the MLS Cup final on Sunday had just under 70,000 people at the game, uh, which crazy. Uh, my understanding is, yeah, my understanding is the most people they've ever had 
um, uh, in that uh, in that building, which is where the Seahawks play. Uh, Atlanta right. United is another expansion team. They won the championship last year. Uh, they're, they, they came into the league a year before we did. Um, they play uh, in Mercedes-Benz Stadium, where the Falcons play that, that, yeah. in, uh, in Atlanta, yes. obviously. Yes, beautiful stadium. And, and so yeah, they, beautiful. It, it is. Yeah, I went there last year and, and, and walked around. It, it is really nice. I agree. So they, they usually close the top deck for soccer, but that still is, is something in the 45,000 range, and they're selling out every game. And for a handful of games every year, they, they have the whole building open, and they get over 70,000 people. I think they average like 53,000 fans. So you've seen it in, in other markets. Portland's another one that just added seats, the Timbers, uh, and there's a lot of teams. I don't want to single out, you know, uh, Toronto got to the championship. They do well. Um, so, so the league's growing as a whole. When, when you look at um, specifically L.A., like you said, there's, there's two soccer teams in L.A., and there's a lot of sports teams. It's a, it's, a, it's a busy sports market similar to the Bay Area, you know, where the Warriors play. And um, so there's a lot of things you have to do. I mean, there, there's one side is the team side. And so that's John Thorington's – he's really the tip of the spear there um, with putting together a, a successful team. And a team that's um, not only successful today but built for, for longevity. We talked a little bit about that with the Warriors. But I think that the strategy is the same thing with LAFC. We want to win now but we want to put ourselves in position to win for the future. And that's, that's you know, getting a good young talent base, having the right coach, the right player development. In soccer, um, youth academies are a big deal. So our, our youth academy team won the, won the championship last year. Um, so you have, uh, and I don't, uh, you know, under 13, under 15, under 18. So you're developing these kids, you know, as they grow up um, and, and, and having them be part of kind of that LAFC program. Um, so that's really important in soccer and, and, and a place where I think, you know, this country's getting bigger and bigger. Like you said, soccer is the biggest, and, and I, we say soccer, uh, everyone else knows it as football, um, you know, is the biggest sport worldwide growing in this country. So, so having a good team is important. And then I think the other differentiator um, that we've tried to have with LAFC is how do we, how do we create the best possible fan experience? And, and, and there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, you know, that, that's in stadium, that's outside the stadium, that's, you know, with our, with our marks and our logos and our colors and our, um, you know, all the gear, you know, all these different things, the environment you create. I mean, Bank of California Stadium has been unbelievable. We um, started fr- from a grassroots sort of way um, our supporter section, which is, again, something that you see prevalent in European soccer, uh, right. somewhat in, in MLS, but not the same. So our supporter section is called the 3252s. Um, so they're, they're in one end of the stadium. And, and when you go to a game there, that like, that's the first thing you notice, whether you want to or not, by the way. And it just, it bring it, it, and I'm joking there because everyone loves it. It brings the stadium uh, to life. So 3252s, that's the number of seats. It's 3,252 seats. And when you go there, it's awesome. They're, they're, they're safe standing seats is what they're called. And, and there's seats there because for concerts and other events, we want people to be able to sit down. But for soccer games, there's actually a bar that doesn't let the seat itself go down. So these people stand the entire game chanting, and they get the rest of the crowd into it. So that yeah. creates just an unbelievable, memorable experience in the stadium. Um, you know, the other thing that I think helped is we, we've got a pretty large ownership group. And so Magic Johnson's involved. No more Garcia Parra, Mia Hamm, who, who many listeners probably recognize, one of the best um, women soccer players of all time. I should say one of the best soccer players of all time. Um, right. Will Farrell, Tony Robbins, you know Peter Guber's a you know famous guy in his own right and an unbelievable guy uh, for those of us that are fortunate enough to know him. But um, so you had that too that that I think brought some credibility right out of the shoot before we even played as you as you look to build the brand. So it, it's a similar philosophy, and, and again Peter Guber being the main. Um, you know, sort of common thread, but it's a similar philosophy to what we look at with the Warriors, which is, you know, it's funny, people look at my title, Chief Revenue Officer, oh, you're the money guy. And I say, well, sure, but, but, really, <laughs> right, the, yeah. but, but, but really the focus is on the fan. If we can create the best possible fan experience, uh, the rest kind of takes care of itself. And, and LAFC, you know, fingers crossed, but has gotten off, we've gotten off to a great start, uh, and so we're looking forward to keeping that going, you know, next year and beyond. What I do like is that you have a successful ownership group. And by the way, folks, we're here with Brandon Schneider. He's is within that ownership group for the L.A. Football Club and also Chief Revenue Officer for the Golden State Warriors. But what I like about it is you have a lot of credibility on the ownership side, and it will reach out to the fans. Now, there is a crossover, right? So you think about the regular people in the last couple of minutes here of the segment. Think about the regular NFL fans, the Major League Baseball fans, the NBA fans, the NHL fans. When you look at the fan base, you say which ones are the most loyal, but then which ones are the most apt to understand the game of soccer and 
also understand why certain things happen in these games. Because you could watch a game on TV and say, well, I don't really know what's going on other than they have to kick the ball into that net going the other direction. That's all I know. And a lot of people are that way. They're very, I wouldn't say ignorant, but they just don't necessarily know. It's a nice way of saying ignorant, I suppose. But my point is <laughs> to educate them and to to teach them, look, this is – this is so big. It's so it's worldwide. It's the biggest thing going. Oh, and by the way, the biggest names in sports and entertainment are in the ownership group. So you need to be a part of this too and watch what we're doing, folks. Back here with Brandon Schneider in just a few minutes. I'm gonna ask more questions on soccer and other things too. Back in a minute. Don't go anywhere. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou. Lou is one of you and will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou is like you. He's on meds, too. Call 800-349-6855. 800-349-6855. 800-349-6855. Again, that's 800-349-6855. Nobody wants to get ripped off, broken into, or robbed, but nobody wants to pay a lot of money to have their home protected either. I've got an offer to tell you about to provide home security for your home for less than a dollar a day. For real, with no installation or equipment charges. And this is from a company rated number one by a leading consumer research company. According to the facts, most of you won't even call unless there's a burglary in your neighborhood or something bad happened. So let's give you a reason. Save money. For less than a dollar a day with no other costs, you can get your home secured. Plus, get a lifetime equipment replacement warranty. You need protection for your home. Call the Home Security Hotline right now. 800-361-3491. 800-361-3491. Again, that's 800-361-3491. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Why? Because you can save 45% on packages compared to your high-priced cable bill. Wow. Take those giant scissors out and cut the cable and save with Dish TV. Plus, you get a free DVR upgrade to record your favorite shows and free installation. And with Dish Anywhere, you can watch TV for free on your mobile device. Act fast. You can save hundreds of dollars. Does your cable company do that for you? I don't think so. Get all the best TV programming at your fingertips at a fraction of the price of cable TV. So say adios, arrivederci, goodbye to the high cable bill, and save up to 45% on Dish TV packages today. These are limited time offers and can change at any time. Call fast. 800-405-2561. 800-405-2561. That's 800-405-2561. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. Folks, make sure you check out thesportscircus.com for all of our future guests, our prior guests, our podcast. Check out our partners as well. We have some great charities that are represented through our partners. And also make sure you stream us when you're out of the area on from our radio or television. You can stream us at thesportscircus.com. And folks, we have a special co-host today with us today. That's Brandon Schneider. He is the Chief Revenue Officer for the Golden State Warriors and also a part owner of the L.A. Football Club in MLS. That's pretty exciting stuff, Brandon. Can I tell you? 
<laughs> That's very exciting. I don't disagree, but I, I don't disagree, but I'm a little bit biased. Hey, listen, you could say you agree. It's okay. You don't have to say I don't disagree. The double negative thing might confuse some of the well, it might true it might confuse some of the fans out there from other clubs. Because that that might be some pretty big word there. You know, we don't want to do that. <laughs> as long as I don't confuse as long as I don't confuse you, Sal, we're good. No, man, I'm good. I'm good. So you made a comparison in between on commercial break, and you were saying, well, there's uh, MLS is is moving up. Major League Soccer is moving up. And listen, for all those people that are, are streaming the show or listening on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast or iHeart or Spotify or Hotel TV or Amp TV, I want you to tell the difference of you have an up-and-coming Major League Soccer Right, this this is really rolling now. It's, it's it's really doing well, and of course, your team is what seventy two points in the last season. Just did pretty pretty damn good. But what I'm after here is so maybe the EPL, as you said, the English Premier League, is kind of like the number one league in the world, whatever. Right now, and I know NBC is pushing the daylights out of it right now. So be it. It whatever, whatever. Let me ask you this: After the NFL season ends, after the Super Bowl, we're going to see the second coming of the XFL. Now. The XFL, in my opinion, I think they're going to make a huge splash this time around because I think McMahon and company learned a little bit from the first time around. And I think they're really positioning this well. I think they're going to market it well. Of course, it's going to come to a big crescendo as we enter into the playoff season for the NFL. I mean, they're already doing a lot for playoff or for uh, season tickets and sales and so forth. But would you say that the Major League Soccer is going to overtake the EPL in the same way that possibly, I know this sounds ludicrous, how the XFL could potentially not only take a big bite out of the NFL, but possibly pass it up because of, let's face it, a lot of fans are really upset. And I know you're a 49er fan. I read that about you, right? So imagine, you're like, your 49ers just took a bad loss. It is what it is. But remember, what if the le- the rules are a little bit looser in the XFL? And what if maybe they have some of the Canadian football rules? I'm just throwing this out there just so we can have fun dialogue, right? What if there is something a little bit more attractive about the XFL? Will you buy into it? I mean, not physically buy a team. I mean, hell, you're already in that business. But I'm saying, will you, as a fan, buy into it and support the XFL? Yeah, it, you know, it's a really interesting question. Um, I, I think... I'm a kind of on a wait and see on this one. Um, I, I don't disagree with some of the comments that you made as far as, you know, learning from the last time around and, and, and having kind of a different plan and, and, and doing, going about things a different way. Uh, I will tell you the NFL is strong. I mean, the NFL is obviously a very established league. And we, we were talking about this during the commercial NFL is the best football league in the world. Uh, the NBA is the best basketball league in the world. Um, Major league baseball is the best baseball league in the world. Uh, so I don't, I, I don't know um, if if the XFL is going to be able to to do a lot uh, in competing with the NFL out of the shoot. Although I'm not sure that that's their goal either. Um, maybe and, and maybe more in the long run. But I think it's I think it's 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 to to take advantage of the fact that you have a lot of football fans and you know when the NFL season's over there, there's a void that are there I think is what they're banking on that they can fill. So I think it's probably competing with with other sports properties uh, besides the, the NFL. Um, and, and the other thing I would say is, you know, this day and age, everybody's after, uh, I mean, sports is, is live sports content is such an important thing because you have, you know, everything's DVR and, um, you know, so no one watches anything live anymore. And, and sports is, is appointment viewing and it's, it's that real life, you know, soap opera, so to speak. So it's just, you know, the, the entertainment value of sports, I, I think, continues to grow in, in, in the, the minds and hearts of, of, of everybody. And I was saying this country, but I would say worldwide. Um, and so I think that's what it more plays into is, is just additional live sports content, um, at least in the short run. But I'm, I'm like I said, I'm a wait and see uh, with the XFL. I'm, I'm, I'll be watching, and I'm, re- I'm really curious to see, uh, you know, how it launches and what the differentiators are and, and the quality of the game and all those sorts of things. And, and ultimately, what's the entertainment value? Um, it'll be very, very interesting to watch. So I have to ask what do you, 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 I was going to say, what do you think, Sal? Look, I think the XFL is going to come in, and I think they're going to kick the behinds of the NFL right out the gate. Then I think it's going to level off a little bit. 
So I really think from a rating standpoint, they're going to kill it on the television ratings because they're going to market it right. And I think it'll taper a little bit after the first month, but I think it'll level off into a position where, hey, look, it warrants a second, third, fourth season because I think enough people are going to be intrigued because let's face it, you have a whole new league with no history of drama just yet. Right now, the NFL has loads of drama. Loads of drama. I mean, from Colin Kaepernick to this guy to that guy. There's so much baggage for the NFL right now that I think the XFL is a little bit refreshing. Yeah. It'll be interesting to watch it play out. Uh, we can agree on that. Okay. So now, as as a financial guy, as a chief revenue officer guy, let me ask you this. Look, I'm in Las Vegas, and I see – the MGM Resorts International selling off hotels so they can spend their money in the sports gambling business. So for me personally, I find this remarkably disturbing. I'm, I'm a former baseball player, and I scratch my head looking at this thing. I don't get it, but I do get it. How do you feel about the idea of teams turning in lineups maybe an hour before a game and then basically having to answer to the gaming world? I understand the value in capturing the millennial crowd and so forth, but to me it seems like a remarkable security breach. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Um, I mean, the first answer is it, it's coming whether whether you and I like it or not. Um, it, it's it, and, and that's I think that's the position. You know, Adam Silver was was outspoken in, in his op-ed piece a couple of years ago. Um, people are are gambling on sports um, whether we like it or not, and it's just you know up until recently it's largely been unregulated in this country aside from where you are, um, and so it, it's happening in the shadows. So I think the idea is if we can regulate it. Um, and have it be, you know, on the up and up, so to speak, um, uh, and level playing field. That, that 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 makes it a lot better. Um, and and so I and I think there's there's a lot of truth to that. So you know, it's it's it, it's a state, you know, it's a state legislated thing, as you know. So a lot of states, and, and California is likely to be one of the last, is is what people smarter okay. than me have said. Um, but you know, you've seen a lot of a lot of states legalize it, and I, and I, and I think the way sports has kind of looked at it. I mean, it's it's not our business. Like we're not in the gambling business. You mentioned MGM and right. Win and, and others, but but what I think people um, are are intrigued by is it it is very good for engagement. Um, you know, it's it, it creates even more interest uh, in in the sport itself because. You know, you, you, I mean, people have fandom and root for teams, but you've seen it with fantasy sports that people have that, uh, that additional rooting interest in players and teams that, that makes them watch more and be more invested in the sport. And, and same thing when people, you know, make wagers, um, you know, on games. It makes them even more okay. engaged in what it is. So that, that, that that's, okay. you know, that's a positive. Take, take, all right, because we're only, we're, I think we have about maybe two minutes left. Is that right, Mr. Producer? We have about two minutes left, Sonar? Okay, so here, let's let's do this real quick. Take 30 seconds and tell me why it's advantageous because, A, and I'm, ta I'm saying from a tax standpoint, so if we legalize it, then we can tax it. Well, guess what? In the sports book, those bets are not subject to tax. How does that help the state of Nevada, the state of California, the state of whatever? So I, I, I can't speak to, to what you just said, but I do know in other states that are legalizing sports betting that, that – there, there is. There's licenses that, that these organizations have to pay to be able to operate, um, and, and there are taxes. So there, there are revenues that are going to the state. I mean, that's 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 why they're legalizing it. So I do I mm -hmm. do think that 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 that's the benefit. And then and then again, when you get it regulated, and, and like the NBA has been been a big proponent of making sure these these gambling companies are using um, their their official stats. So so you have it right. on a level playing field, all in the up and up. Uh, that that's really important as well. Okay, well, big thanks, Brandon. Thanks for joining us. Brandon Schneider, big thanks for joining us here on the Sports Circus today as our guest co-host. You're always welcome back. Folks, make sure you follow the L.A. Football Club. That's Brandon's team. He's got a dog in the fight. And make sure you follow the Golden State Warriors as well. This guy's the chief revenue officer over there doing a fantastic job. Thanks for joining us again, Brandon. And we'll see you next time right here on the Sports Circus. Until then, so long, everyone.
Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this commercial right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935 or email us. 